Okay, begin. Okay, how many people in the audience in the past year have recreated outside? Hands up, come on. Backpacked, hiked, taking your dog out, hunted, fished, anything. So pretty much everyone in the whole audience, right? And of course, you know, that's the Montana way, that's the Bozeman way. Now, how many of you in the past year have experienced this, right? Facing death with large carnivores. Anyone, one couple people have lived to tell about it? So not many, right? So not really a significant number of people. So, so, so my question is, like, like, what is going on here? What is this about? And, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about the public perception of large carnivores and the reality and how maybe, maybe wolves, lions, and bears aren't as ferocious as we've been led to believe. Now, before I begin, I got to acknowledge right away that large carnivores definitely do kill livestock. They kill a couple hundred uh, cows and sheep every year. And grizzly bears especially do pose a significant threat to people. Uh, every year, there are several uh, very dangerous attacks. And about once every three or four years, there is a fatal attack of a grizzly on a person. Now, the reason that happens, that wildlife experts tell, tell us, is that a grizzly especially will attack someone if they perceive a threat to themselves, to their young, or to their food. That's the main reason. And then also, occasionally, a grizzly bear or a mountain lion or a black bear will become predatory. And it will actually stalk and try to kill a human being. And that does happen, but very rarely. And so, um, what, I'm, what, I'm, uh, what I'm interested in finding out and talking about is, go to the next slide, is the fact that it happens so rarely, even though we have so many large carnivores in Montana. 1,500 grizzly bears, 15,000 black bears, 1,000 wolves, and 4,000 mountain lions. So we have a lot of fangs in the forest. And all of those carnivores are out among hundreds of thousands of Montanans and tourists who are out hiking and backpacking in the woods. And so all of this is going on. And so what surprises me is not so much that there are an occasional large carnivore attack of a person in Montana, an occasional fatality. What surprises me with all of these carnivores out there that there aren't far more attacks and far more injuries. Now, why is that? Why, why, given all the carnivores in Montana and the number of people who are out recreating, like all of us, why aren't there more? Two main reasons. And one is public safety education. Definitely that helps. Getting people to carry bear spray so if they are attacked by a bear, they can fend it off without injury to themselves or the animal. And also food storage security. Getting people to keep their food away from grizzly bears especially so they don't become habituated to people. But more important than that, I think, is that the animals themselves are showing restraint. They are choosing, as we're out among them, to not attack us. So wolves, for example, wolves can take down a bull elk. A pack of wolves could take down a bull elk. They could easily kill you or me, right, when we're out hiking around in the woods. But they choose not to. They choose not to. And so they're showing restraint, as are most of the time all the other large carnivores in Montana. And that's what I think is not recognized very often. Now, why is that not part of the conversation that we have about large carnivores in this state? And I think it goes back to Europe and the imagery with, we've been shown over the past 200 years, starting with the imagery of bears and wolves as menacing and threatening. And Europeans came to this country carrying those perceptions with them. And then you had the rise of sporting art in the early 20th century that reinforced Frederick, Frederick Jackson Turner's frontier thesis that said that taming wild animals and the wilderness was instrumental in forging the unique and exceptional American character. And then, in the mid 20th century, you had the rise of this. And I'm just gonna let this speak for itself. T take it in, audience. And then this dominated newsstands for decades. And it got worse. 
Because not only were bears seen as threats, but at one point, even turtles and weasels were seen as threats that needed to be subdued by manly men. Okay. And so we laugh. We laugh. Yeah. We laugh today, but even now in the 21st century, publishers still recognize that all of us, men and women, we like to be scared, and that images of threatening large animals sell magazines. And the problem with this, that I think, is that it perpetuates a mythology. And it distorts the reality of what's really going on out there, which I think is more accurately depicted by this Gary Larson cartoon, where you have a bear just living its life, you got a hunter like me, shoots it, celebrates, and then poses the bear in this menacing pose, making it look dangerous. Or, also equally realistic, might be these headlines that I just wrote for this presentation. But I, oh gosh. Anyway, um, I think these are more accurate depictions of what's really happening in the outdoors of Montana every day. In conclusion, yes, lions, bears, and wolves do kill livestock. Grizzly bears especially pose a threat to all of people who are out hiking, and we need to take precautions like carrying bear spray. But at the same time, I think all of us who recreate in the outdoors might want to recognize and appreciate the remarkable restraint that large carnivores show toward us every time we leave our homes and venture outside into theirs. Thank you.